Hey everyone, I hope you're surviving lockdown. I'm Rob Clays from Progression, and this is episode two of Kite Sofering, and today we're gonna to be looking at looping the kite. But let's jump back on the sofa, have a chat, and then we'll come back here for the dives. Okay, so today we are gonna be talking about looping the kite. Now, most of you probably think of big, powerful mega loops when you think of kite loops. Uh, the stuff you see in the king of the air that all the pros are doing. And it's probably scared you off a little bit. And the reason being is that type of kite loop, the guys are actually looping the kite when the lines are fully under tension. The kite is racing up through the window, they pull hard, and it means the kite does this big, powerful, big loop right through the power zone, and it just gives them this huge amount of pull. But a kite loop doesn't have to be like that. And actually there's lots of different names for it, like kite loop, down loop, under loop, looping the kite. And there's lots of ways of looping the kite that doesn't give us that massive surge of power. And actually we can use it to, to give us power, but more importantly, we can use it to give us consistency of power. That's why the way looping the kite is really, really great because it's always flying, it's always got air flying over it. And so we get a very stable kite. So it has some really good applications. And actually most people, once you've got some basic kite flying skills, um, can start having a go at it. And we're gonna show you today that intro to kite looping. How you can loop a kite to start with and it not rip you off your feet. So let's have a think about where we might use this, this looping of the kite. Transitions are a really popular place and a really good place to be using them. And that could be a sliding turn on a twin tip, it can be a carving turn, whether that's on your twin tip, on a surfboard, on a foil. It could be a jump transition. Again, great place to throw a loop in. Um, and all of these, it doesn't have to be really extreme. It can be, but we can actually do it in a really, really controlled manner. Uh, water starts are really handy. Light wind water starts when you haven't quite got enough power to pull you up. Doing a nice loop can give you that extra power and keep the kite moving so it doesn't fall into the water in light winds when you're desperate to get back to the beach. And sometimes you're not worried about trying to start wind and you can just keep looping the kite and keep that stability in the kite as much as giving us that power so that we can just get pulled in. Same with just walking into the water sometimes. Really light winds, you're walking along with the kite and the kite's falling out of the sky and rather than it crashing, throwing in a quick under loop can save us. And finally, wave riding. Sometimes with wave riding, we'll use it to give us power, but actually a lot of the time it's that stability again. Throwing in a loop can allow us to position the kite just where we want it so that we've got the right pull when we're trying to hit a, a lip or, or get the right bottom turning. So how do we do it? That's the important bit, isn't it? That's what you're here today to learn. So, well basically we're gonna keep the kite really high in the sky. The mega loopers and the big kite loops, they're using this lower part of the power zone. And we want to be using this top part. Okay, so we're getting the kite really nice and high. And then the key is we're doing a nice tight loop of the kite. We're not trying to whip it through the power zone. And if we keep it really high, we keep it really tight, we shouldn't really get pulled at all. So anyway, we're gonna jump over to the demo area. I'm gonna show you the three main steps that you're gonna do on the bar. And then, uh, you know, next time you get out of the water, you can give it a go. Okay, so I've got my little makeshift bar here set up. So I can talk you through uh, a particular, like the first time that you start having to go at kite loops. So generally this is gonna be, you're either gonna do it uh, in shallow water, so waist deep water is pretty good, uh, walk out without your board. Uh, you can do it in deeper water, so you can jump off in deep water, leave your board, uh, foil, surfboard behind you, as long as you think you can get back to it easy enough. We want to be in a conditions where we're not too powered up. This is a great thing to do in lighter winds when you're waiting around maybe on the beach and there's not much wind. Chuck your kite up. As long as you can keep it in the sky reasonably easily, walk out into shallow water and you're good to go. So we brought our kite up to 12 and we're just basically playing around with the movement of flying the kite. And then we can adapt it to different situations as we start to build up a bit of confidence. And when the first time you do one, you're going to bring the kite up to 12 o'clock. So at this point, the kite is effectively like, you know, not pulling us. We're fully sheeted out. That's our first kind of position, okay? What are we gonna do? Well, we wanna, we wanna turn the kite fast and then we wanna send it back up to the top. So the, the way in which we do this, sheet fully in, 
pull hard with one hand to loop it one way. Once the kite is looped and is done a full loop and it's heading back up, upwards, we level the bar, that will send it straight back up and then we sheet out. Okay, so sheet in, fully pull the bar one way. Once it's finished the loop, level off and sheet out. Which way you're gonna pull will depend on what you're doing. So often in a, if we're doing what we call a down loop, so through a transition, if I was heading from left to right, so I'm riding in this direction, I'm generally gonna loop the kite forwards because I want it to loop round and head with me as I come out of the transition. So I might be doing a jump, I loop it round. I might be doing a carve on a foil or a twin tip on a surfboard. And as I'm coming round, I'm looping the kite. So as it comes out, it's driving me out of the turn. So I'm only pulling with my front hand. So I'm heading in this direction, front hand. I'm gonna sheet in. I'm gonna pull hard, level the bar and sheet out. Okay. So a couple of things you wanna try and avoid. <laughs> And they're quite obvious, but when you actually first start doing it, that's why it's great doing it in shallow water um, when you're not too powered up, because you can make some of these mistakes and you're not gonna have any real big issues crop up. Not sheet in fully, start pulling. Why doesn't this work? Well, it, it can work in some situations and you get more experience, definitely, depending on your kite, where how much you sheet in will generally depict how big a loop you're gonna do. To start, we were trying to do a nice tight loop, keep it high in the window so we generate a small amount of power, but constant power, hence the fully sheeting in. If you only sheet in halfway, even if you pull really hard, you might find it really whips through the water and it pulls you hard. Something to play with as you get more advanced and you get more used to the feeling of it, but to start with, fully sheeted in. So the other big mistake that people make, they sheet in and they kind of like half cock it. They don't pull it all the way in, they just do it partially and again you get this big loop and then they freak out and level it and it smashes into the water or pulls them really hard. Third one, fully sheet in, fully pull it, but then you let go too soon. <laughs> and so the kite goes round and then like stops halfway and smashes into the water. Got some footage from uh, last year in Morocco, which I'm gonna show you. And that's gonna show this in real world situations a little bit better. And here you're actually gonna see uh, Danny teaching one of our students on a foiling uh, private session this exact thing, him doing it in the water and then getting the student to have a go. Okay, so you can see Danny here is, he's got the kite at 12 o'clock, he's got the bar sheeted out. And now he sheets in fully, pulls hard, right in hard, and you can see the kite loops all the way around and when it completes the loop, he levels the bar and sheets out. It really is as simple as that. And you can see he hardly gets pulled at all in the water. He's on maybe a nine or 10 meter in probably about 15 or so knots. So, you know, not hugely powered up. And here you can see I led one of our, our students um, basically replicating that same process. So kite up to 12, sheet in, pull hard, keep pulling in hard, level the bar and sheet out. Cool, so that was episode two. Um, if you haven't checked out our first episode, that was on board grabs. Um, really good reaction to that. Thanks everyone for watching and subscribing. Uh, you can check that out on YouTube. We've got some other great videos lined up. We are gonna be do some, doing something for uh, all you kiting beginners. We're gonna look at uh, board starts, water starts, whatever you wanna call them. Um, we've got some great bits that you can practice around in your home while you're, you know, for those of you that have kind of got a bit stalled with your lessons because of everything that's going on. Uh, yeah, we're gonna give you some stuff that you can try here sitting on your sofa again. Foiling, one of my big passions. I'm just finishing the foiling uh, foot changes video. It's been a long time coming, but it is very, very close now. That should be released in the next week. Um, and I'm gonna do a special uh, kite surfing episode all about that so you can uh, start to, uh, again, have a go in your living room and play around with some uh, foiling foot changing technique. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got anything you'd like us to cover, I think we're gonna be here for a while on lockdown. So uh, email me in, comment on any of the uh, different social media accounts, let us know what you'd like to see, and we'll try and help you out. And uh, you know, stay safe, stay home as best as you can, and let's all work together to try and uh, knock this COVID-19 thing on the head. See you next week.